Hello guys and welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Golden Score Show right here on Nonfield Flicks, your home of black entertainment. My name is Adelani Okuri and they're here to give you the very latest in the world of sports. You don't want to miss it. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Golden Score News and these are some of the stories making headlines this hour. Starting with FIFA approving the MKO Abiola Stadium. In our next story, you wouldn't believe it, Jose Mourinho named Roma boss. In another story, Myres double fires City to the finals. Manchester City last five years now makes sense, says Pep Guardiola. Kylian Mbappe, absence, not to blame for loss, says Pochettino. And in another story, IPL suspended after rise in COVID-19 cases. Now, let's take a deeper look into these stories and much more. Started with our first story, FIFA approves MKO Abiola Stadium. World football governing body FIFA have approved seven stadiums, including MKO Abiola National Stadium in Abuja, for the home games of the Super Eagles in the 2022 World Cup qualifiers. The other approved stadiums are Teslim Balogun Stadium in Lagos, Akwaibom International Stadium in Uyo, Unam Diazikwe Stadium in Enugu, and the Stephen Keshi Stadium in Asaba. Can't wait to see Super Eagles play on all those turfs. Hopefully, they impress their fans and qualify for the 2022 World Cup. Now, let's have a look at some international football because Jose Mourinho is making the headlines again. And, um, well, I guess for the right reasons this time, Jose Mourinho named Roma boss. Jose Mourinho has been appointed Roma manager from the start of next season. The 58-year-old will replace his fellow Portuguese, Paolo Francesca, who Roma announced earlier on Tuesday that he would leave at the end of the current season. Mourinho sacked by Tottenham on the 19th of April and he has signed a three-year deal with three-time Serie A champions. Well, that should be interesting. Let's see whether... Uh, Jose Mourinho still has the special touch. So many people are speculating that he's actually finished in football and what is left is for him to make money. Well, let's move on to uh, Myres yesterday. Um, our African son was shining yesterday. He was at it again yesterday. And Myres double fire City to the finals. Manchester City reached their first Champions League final as they overcame Paris Saint-Germain at the Etihad Stadium to secure a commanding victory over two legs. In a game played on seasonal snow, the brilliant Red Myers capped a sweeping move that was started by goalkeeper Edison's 60-yard pass to extend their 2-1 advantage from the first leg in Paris. Myres punished them again just after the hour mark when he turned in Phil Foden's cross at the far post to effectively end the contest. PSG was so disappointing last night and um, they deserved actually uh, not to get their ticket to the final. They were not good at all yesterday and they were rather flat uh, without uh, Kylian Mbappe, their talisman. Well, um, now Pep Guardiola has come out to say that Manchester City, his last five years now, uh, makes sense. That's what Pep Guardiola has been saying in the news. And uh, Manchester City boss Pep Guardiola says, guiding the club to a first Champions League final now makes sense of his five-year um, spell in charge at the Etihad Stadium. The Blues are one win away from a third league title under Guardiola, but he had failed to steer them past the quarterfinals in Europe until this season. This is remarkable, said Guardiola. People believe it's easy to arrive in the final of the Champions League. 
get into the final now makes sense of what we have done in the past four or five years. Well, hey, um, it, it could make sense now, boys. Is Manchester City really going to win it? Well, it remains to be seen. I'm not sure they have what it takes to beat Real Madrid if they are to meet Real Madrid in the final. What do you guys think? Now, moving on to uh, Pochettino's um, post-match comments in which he said Kylian Mbappe's absence is not to blame for the loss. Now, Paris Saint-Germain boss Mauricio Pochettino refused to blame his side's Champions League exit to Manchester City on the absence of World Cup winning forward Kylian Mbappe. They were clinical, said Pochettino, who became PSG's boss in January. I congratulate Manchester City. They're having a fantastic season. Well, that is an understatement, really. Manchester City are having more than a fantastic season. They're really killing it, and I wouldn't be surprised if they win the Champions League. Well done to Pep Guardiola. Now, moving on to um, some rather sad news. Um, IPL suspended after rise in COVID-19 cases. The Indian Premier League has been suspended after an increase in coronavirus cases among players. Monday's match between the Calcutta Knight Riders and Royal Challengers were postponed after two players from the Calcutta Knight Riders tested positive. In a statement, the IPL said it had unanimously decided to postpone the season after an emergency meeting. Oh, that's sad indeed. I mean, cricket is disturbed by uh, this COVID-19 cases and all the sports really around the world. Well, we hope for healing on the world and definitely we can enjoy um, crowds coming back to the stadiums again um, to yell at players and push on their favorite teams to do better. I'm surely looking forward to that. Now, after the break, guess what? We're talking to two people that are so great with analyzing sports. We're first going to talk to Emmanuel Kurada all the way in Cape Town. He'll be talking about Mourinho's appointment. And he would also be talking about what we witnessed last night between PSG and Manchester City. Then, after we speak to Emmanuel Kurada, we're going to get John Aliu on the line. That's right, John Aliu is going to be talking about the Real Madrid-Chelsea game tonight. And then we close the show. But you don't want to miss it. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Golden Score Show right here on Non-Field Flicks, your home of black entertainment. And as promised, we have Emmanuel Akura Ada on the line telling us what he thinks of Jose Mourinho's appointment and what we witnessed yesterday with PSG and Manchester City. Emmanuel Akura Ada, take it away. Thank you so much, Adelani, for that introduction. And it's uh, so good to be here once again, even though I'm not there physically with you, but uh, my spirit is with you. Well, Adelani, um, first, let's look at the Champions League that took place last night, talking about Manchester City versus PSG. Um, wow. What a performance it was from Manchester City. They really showed character. They showed that they're a team that actually want to win the Champions League. And with the way things are looking right now, and I don't see anyone stopping this team because they're very good. But one thing that stood out for me yesterday, Adelani, was the pass from Edison. Man, who can give that? I mean, look at what the pass that this guy gave that led to the first goal scored by Myers. That guy was just, it was just an incredible pass. And I tell you this, this Manchester City team is complete. And I see only a team like Real Madrid that have the Champions League experience that whenever they get to the final, they make sure they win it, that can be able to challenge this Manchester City side. Yesterday, they showed um, they are actually a team that for the past few years have been coming close, even though this is their first Champions League final. 
but they show that they have enough experience right now to get to the final and win it. And wow, it what what a result is going to be for uh, the Manchester City family and also the Pep Guardiola, who um, since he left Barcelona, a lot of people have been saying because he had a you know the golden generation, the likes of Messi, you know Iniesta and all that. That was why he won the Champions League with Barcelona, and he could not replicate that with Bayern Munich. Coming to Manchester City after spending a lot of money, especially on defenders and goalkeeper, uh, you can see that there was so much criticism from a lot of people about why he is not winning the Champions League. So a lot of people started questioning his um, uh, his uh, managerial uh, uh, skill, you know, because you can't just be winning when there's money, man. But the guy is showing right now that he is the pep that we knew when he was at Barcelona. And taking uh, Manchester City to the Champions League final, it's just good for football, man. It's also showing that the English Premier League is actually stepping up to uh, to dominate when it comes to the uh, European football. And that is a good thing for a lot of us uh, Premier League lovers. We're talking about um, uh, Jose Mourinho going to uh, Roma. Wow. This guy was just jobless for 15 days. I must say, imagine just <laughs> getting fired where he knew he was going to be paid a lot of millions. And now getting another job, Italian job from Jose Mori. This is second uh, spare in. Uh, this is going to be his second spare in, in Italian football. We all uh, remember his time in Inter Milan when he went there in 2010. He was the last person uh, coach to win the, uh, the Italian league with uh, Inter uh, before Antonio Conte uh, did it this year. So Jose Mori went there, and with so much that was uh, given to him as the world best coach, he went there, he won the, the Italian league, he won um, the, the Champions League that Inter Milan were waiting for the past 40, 80 years without winning. He was able to do that. So he's a proven coach. He's a coach that people pay for his services, but knowing fully where that he is going to deliver. I'm going to Roma now. But the question is that, did they promise this guy a lot of money for him to sign players? Because Roma, we all know they are just good for competing. They're like Arsenal right now, you know. They're, just, they're good for competing in the league without seriously competing for the title. They're just there every year. They want to qualify for the Europa, the Champions League, you know. But now bringing in a coach of that caliber, Jose Mourinho. Jose Mourinho want to win trophies. Jose Mourinho want to win the league. It's going to be very interesting. I'm very excited, actually, with this appointment because we have... Uh, Juve, who dominated for nine years in Time Milan, came, uh, uh, Antonio Conte came back and disrupted that reign. You know, and right now you are bringing in Jose Mourinho, who is a coach that wants to win trophies. What we will, I can't wait, you know, to see what Jose Mourinho, Antonio Conte, Pilo, if he's going to be in charge, and then you also have the likes of Sari, who are jobless but also looking for a job in the Italian league. We're going to see how the, this league is going to be. But I tell you this, it's going to be a very interesting league to see Jose Mourinho on the touchline, to see Antonio Conte, you know, to see this great likes of Gattuso. Italian league is actually building, but it's building. It's coming back to what it used to be, where you used to have the likes of uh, Francisco Totti, you know, used to have the likes of uh, Vieri, used to have those great players then competing and how competitive that league was. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing Jose Mourinho in uh, Roma, you know, the glamour that he's going to bring to the Italian league. And this is also good. I, I also read somewhere that uh, the, um, the, 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 the Roma uh, followers have increased by 10% because they just appointed Jose Mori. That shows you how, how good this guy is. And it shows you what this guy can bring to any team because he's a good coach. He has won it. He has done it everywhere he goes. So now we're going to see what Jose Mori will do. But I'm excited about his appointment. Though. Over to you, Adelani. Thank you so much, Emmanuel, for sharing your thoughts about PSG and Manchester City and also the Jose Mourinho appointment. Well, let's see whether he could live up to um, the special one tag. So many people have given him. He doesn't call himself the special one anymore these days. Maybe he hasn't been getting uh, special results lately in his career. But let's see what he does at Roma. Now, we have another sports guru on the line really um john aliu and john aliu is going to be talking about the real madrid chelsea game tonight john aliu so glad to have you on the golden score show today what are your thoughts yeah thank you very much Ade, for this uh, wonderful opportunity to 
to shed light on um, my opinion with regards to um, the UEFA Champions League semi-final second legs. They are going to be very exciting. That's one thing I'm sure of. And um, I'm so glad that, of course, uh, football came back after the long uh, after the long break. Well, now, for Real Madrid-Chelsea, a very interesting game here. And when you look at the run of Chelsea, it mirrors what happened in 2012 when they actually sacked um, AVB, brought in uh, De Matteo, went all the way. I think they also played Spanish opposition, Barcelona in the semi-final back then. So it mirrors what happened back in 2012. Now they have someone, Thomas Tuchel, uh, who is doing very well, who is hitting the right chords for the club. And uh, they're up against, um, well, I say, a perennial champion, zero winners of the Champions League. So this is another game that is evilly poised. Don't think it's over yet. Yes, Chelsea went all the way to Real Madrid and actually played them on their own turf. Uh, I don't know how that game ended 1-1. Chelsea could have killed the game off on the first leg. But when you're playing against um, Real Madrid, no matter what happens in any of the legs, they are never pushovers. You do that at your own peril. Even if Real Madrid lost in England 3-0. I think Real Madrid still have a chance in the second leg against any club. And that is how good they are. It's not just, uh, well, I say the manager at the helm, but the team resonates with quality. They resonate with success. You understand? For a team to win the Champions League uh, back to back to back, that is not for the faint-hearted. Only champions can achieve that. So I think Real Madrid, they will dig deep against Chelsea. And uh, they may crash out, you understand, because Chelsea, uh, the brand of football they're playing under Tuchel, they are scared of no one. And uh, even ahead of the game against um, uh, Real Madrid in the first leg, Antonio Rudiger said, uh, Chelsea fear no one. Uh, that's a very bold statement. And they actually played Real Madrid very well at um, the uh, Alfredo Di Stefano Stadium. So I believe uh, Real Madrid uh, can get something at Chelsea. But the question is, without Sergio Ramos, how will they, uh, will I say, cope defensively? Yes, uh, Militao and Varane, who actually sustained an injury over the weekend, they looked apart, but then Sergio Ramos was the vital cog of um, their back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back, uh, UCL uh, a triumph a few years ago. He was more like um, the, 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 the stimulus in that um, incredible run, and his goal be missing. He's the biggest player. He's the biggest name in Real Madrid. So, uh, I think one of the subplots also will be um, Eden Hazard going back to where he actually made, um, uh, he actually became a world class player. At Lille, he was very good, but at Chelsea, he became a world class player. So, I think uh, he will be looking to make a statement against um, Chelsea. Uh, this one is very, is very tight, just like PSG Man City. It's in England. Chelsea, yes, they have the upper hand with the away goal, but there is something about playing the return leg on your home ground. Now, yes, you have um, the all the vibes going for you, but you would have to be very careful because anything can go wrong in the second leg. Anything can go wrong. First leg, you can afford to be careless in the Champions League and still go through because in the second leg, it's a combination of se se several factors. One wrong decision. One wrong decision, one wrong move can undo all your goods in the first leg. And I remember, was it the second time Real Madrid won the Champions League? I remember they played a couple of games at home in the first leg in the knockout phase. And they did very well. They did very well. And even when they struggled, in the second leg, they, they ran riot. The Bayern Munich and the Juventus. I remember they were actually running riot. So I think we are in for a very big treat um, this midweek. But I'm predicting an all english final an all english final if i am not correct or if it doesn't go that way i won't be surprised because trust me these four teams they possess quality and some of the very best in world football so my own predictions i'm going with manchester city against chelsea for the finals john aliu thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us we hope to have you again very soon right here on the golden score show so that wraps up yet another exciting episode. Make sure that you watch again on Friday because we have a special show for you all. From me, Adelani Ogurede, goodbye.